Charterman, 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 Okay, it doesn't actually transform. Hey, what's up, you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another Transformers action figure review on the Transformers Generation Siege War for Cybertron Trilogy Voyager Class Megatron. I gotta give a big thanks to Megalopolis, City of Collectibles, for making this review possible by sponsoring this YouTube channel and sending out this product to review for you guys. Check them out in the description below. They have an awesome point rewards program, and they have this awesome looking packaging as well. And this looks like a pretty cool Megatron so far already. I really like this image of Megatron right here on the side. Cool looking artwork. And then on the back, you can see some nice looking product shots. You get some Battle Masters. And then you can see some more artwork right here on this side. And you get a Decepticon symbol on the top. Not much more at the bottom. So let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's Megatron out of the packaging. Looking pretty awesome in his tank mode. And I never really mind too much when I see Megatron in a tank mode. That doesn't bother me at all. And this figure is quite awesome. I just gotta say right off the bat, I really do like it a lot. Lot, and I took a lot of pictures of it with my Optimus Prime Siege figure, so yeah, it's been a good time with this figure and the Optimus figure. But anyway, let's get a closer look at this tank mode. The one thing that just really stands out to me on this figure is the paint apps. I just really, really love the paint apps on this figure. So this is the NFM Particle B Mega Launcher. Sorry, it's just a telescopic laser strike launcher. It only makes the NFM Particle B Mega Launcher when you combine it with the D50R35 Fusion Cannon. Uh, we'll show it off more when you see him in robot mode, but yeah, this is really awesome how this attaches here and everything. I really dig it. Nice sculpted etched out lines throughout on this piece. I love how this whole weathering thing that they've added to the paint is very consistent throughout on the figure. You know, it looks good in both modes, so you can see it right here across the top. And this looks really good right there. I don't like that you can see his feet. I wish this was concealed in some kind of way. Looking at that silver paint on the top, or it's this gunmetal paint really on the very top of it right here. It just looks great. And I love how throughout the figure we get this really cool metallic brown color. I don't know, it's almost like a gunmetal gray, but it does have this brownish hue to it. You can see it right here along the sides and a little bit more right over here. So I really like the paint on this, just throughout, you know, I've said that many times. Uh, I do have a couple of gripes about this piece though, you know, just the tank mode alone. And by the way, I do love the tension detail with the yellow lights right over here in the front. Uh, but it just, I don't know, I have a hard time getting this to sit perfectly flush the way I want it to. I, I don't know. I, I might be doing something just a little bit wrong here, but it's just a little tricky getting everything totally flush. Uh, but yeah, the, my biggest, the biggest downside with this is that you can see his face right over here. And it rolls really well. Uh, but yeah, it, you just have to make sure that you have everything pushed down right over here. It's just easy to knock it out of alignment and you can hear the wheels rolling. So that's great. Uh, you also get articulation right here so you can move his whole cannon side to side. It doesn't really move up and down though, but I did find a solution to make that happen. So when you put this together, when you're transforming from robot into alt mode, you just slide this thing underneath right over here. But you can remove these spikes, so you just move down right over here, then you gotta find the uh, the slot, where is it, yeah, along the inside of it, right over there. I actually found it easiest to rotate up this much and rotate so it's looking like that, and then you could push inward and it'll pop out, and push inward and that'll pop out, and now you have a cannon without those spikes at the bottom, and then you could turn this up like that if you want to. So now you get more articulation on your tank, and I think it looks a little better like that. The only thing is that, you know, there's no real place for these. Now that it's all back together how it should be, measuring out this tank mode, you can see it's at about eight inches across, eight and a half inches across, and about two and a half to three inches tall. Then for a size comparison, next to the triple changer Voyager class power of the Prime's Megatron and you can see how much larger this Siege Megatron is than the previous version. Now this is a triple changer but yeah still I just think this is a much better looking tank mode than the one that we're seeing right over here. And then here's Megatron next to the Voyager class Siege Optimus Prime and thanks for the tip you guys on folding in that axe properly. I did it right over there. Thank you. I read the comments. Yeah I read the comments but you can see that Optimus is a little bit smaller than Megatron right? And I think each of these figures have attributes that are better than the other. Uh, for instance the Optimus Prime you can see you know, all the weapons just all hanging out 
out and everything. And then this guy has all the weapons concealed in part of this alt mode. And then again, you know, there's face down there, no face over here. Now the transformation is not too difficult on this figure, same like the Optimus Prime. So let's get to it. He takes away Bumblebee. Okie dokie. So we're going to start with taking out the whole NFM uh, blaster fusion McDeely thing. Come on, just slide right out. And there it goes. <laughs> that didn't sound too good, but yeah, it's not too hard putting that in there. I'm not going to show off the transformation going into alt mode, but just to demonstrate how this slides underneath right there, you can see the gap and it just ports right into the fusion cannon. So that's not really that hard. But anyway, getting that out of the way, we're going to start with the legs, get the heels out right over here, pick that out and pick that out right over there. And then come over here, you got tabs that attach to the hips and we're going to release that and it's loud and clicky, but don't worry. And then you have these flaps on the inside that are going to swing up and you're going to grab that right there and swing up. And then this has this double hinge right here that's going to make it swing all the way down and then you want to move it outward. So I'm going to show it off again on the other side. And then you can just take the whole leg. Oh, the leg's going the wrong way. You're going to go like that and then collapse this. Okay, so to show it off again, uh, you get this hinge inside here. So you're going to swing and then swing again and then move this out and then move this down and then collapse like so. And then we got the arms right here and we're gonna actually detach those. And then we got the top right here, gonna detach from these tabs right here, which, you know, get undone a little bit more than I'd like, but you can see the Megatron head right there. And I like to grab this piece right here and lift up and move that forward. And then what we're going to be able to do now is rotate this 180 degrees and then get this folded up and out of the way and move that flat. And then we're going to be able to lift this up and then fold these two pieces in and they'll tab right into place. And then we have space now for the shoulders to move forward and they're going to click into place right there. This whole piece is going to go ahead and move back. Uh, you get tabs right up here and right there and they're going to tab into here and here. So we're going to let that all swing down and you also want to make sure that these shoulder pad thingies are moved down right here so that you get the clearance you need to move this whole back panel and actually i flipped this up i should have left it down and then there that goes so and then this actually all tabs in so yeah that should have been out and then now these two tabs right here will tab into the very back of the figure and then we just have the hands that we got to flip out right here and flip that out right there i wish there was a tab to secure the neck this gets loose on me but all we got to do now is just rotate the fusion cannon and now we have Lord Megatron in his robot mode. And can you say ankle pivot? Oh man, that ankle pivot looks so good. I really liked the alt mode and I also really liked the robot mode on this figure. I forgot to show off the transformation for that sword. So let's take a closer look at his weapons and then we'll take a closer look at Megatron. So here's looking at the fusion cannon or the D50R35 fusion cannon. I didn't know it had a number to go with it, but yeah, that looks really good. I like the sculpted detail throughout on it. Of course you get a port in effects and stuff right there. That's pretty cool. And then we also get the HPR telescopic laser strike launcher. I guess which I mistakenly called the NFM particle beam mega launcher, which is the two of these combined. So there's your NFM uh, particle beam mega launcher right there. Uh, now this transforms, like I said earlier, so you just split it from the middle and they both swing down together like that. And then you can reconnect them and that's how it goes into the tank mode. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's pretty big uh, and I do find it a little bit cumbersome when I see him holding it. It's just like this massive big old sword right over here. Uh, but it does look pretty cool and it does fit pretty well on the back. You know, it's pretty well concealed. So that's not too bad. Not too much to complain about right there. Then when it's combined like this, I do find it a bit irritating that it comes down to a point. So I did figure out that you could just swing these down right over here and then reconnect them and you barely get enough of the port on the fusion cannon to peg into the arm of Megatron and if you want him to have a monstrous fusion cannon like this, you can make that happen, you know? It looks really weird because it's just so oversized, but hey, it's a thing you can do and it does pop off easily because you barely have enough of a port left in there. And then you get ports on the side right here if you want to store the weapons in other places and get creative with it, you know, if you want to port it on the leg, but I think that's all silly. I just like leaving the fusion cannon on the right forearm and maybe the sword on the back or in the left hand. Now one of the highlights of this figure for me is this head sculpt. This head sculpt is amazing. I love it so much much. I love that reflective paint for the red eyes. Unfortunately, I did get a scuff on the chin. It didn't come like that. I don't know at what point how I did that, but yeah, I know it was me. But yeah, nice black paint right over there by the forehead. I love that they have that gunmetal splash right over there. So that looks really good. I love that head sculpt, man. 
great, great G1 cartoon looking head sculpt. I really dig it quite a bit. And I love that we get the Decepticon symbol right in the middle right over there. And then we get more of that gunmetal splashing throughout. And all kinds of nice details in the arms and everything right here. Very G1-esque right there at the lower torso. And I really like how that whole uh, metallic splash looks right over there. I don't know if anyone else is calling it that. It's just me calling it that, though. I'm calling it metallic splash. But anyway, getting a three-quarter look at it, you can see we get some more of that paint detail on the legs. And that looks really good. I love the touch of gunmetal right over here, just above the feet, or just at the top of the feet anyway. Here's looking at the side of the figure. Not looking too bad. Then yeah, it gets a little backpacky, kind of like the Optimus Prime, but it really doesn't bother me too much, man. The legs look really good. Now there is a port for a stand, but unfortunately I cannot fit a stand into this port. It's just too small. However, if you lift up right here, you can see there's two ports. I was able to fit a Figma stand port into here, and then a Mafex stand port into this one, which I ended up using. Now getting that Fusion Cannon back on there and to go over the articulation, I am a bit frustrated with the head articulation, more specifically the neck articulation, because you get this hinge over here and it doesn't lock into place at all. So it just tends to dip down like that, and that's frustrating. And you can fling it all the way back. So I wish there was a tab or something to lock this into place. So just looking at the ball joint itself, he'll look up that far and without moving that hinge, uh, he can't look down at all. He'll just look forward, but you do get side to side motion and no head tilting at all. Uh, the shoulders move outward, they move downward. Someone had mentioned a shoulder joint on this. I don't think this counts. It just moves back. It doesn't move forward at all. Similar thing on the Megatron. You can get the shoulders to move back due to transformation, but they won't move forward at all. Again, you can move that out. You could rotate 360 right here. Uh, you get an elbow swivel and then you get a single jointed elbow that just barely bends in more than 90 degrees. I don't like the gap right over here. There's no wrist articulation. You do get a waist swivel. Hips move outward that far and of course you could rotate the fusion cannon around as you'd like. Uh, we do get an upper thigh cut right over here. He'll kick forward that much and back very far. You get a single jointed knee that does meet the 90 degree mark. And then the ankles have this really weird hidden ankle pivot articulation. You cannot move them down or up at all which is frustrating. I mean you can see it wiggle. And then you get the heel that can move down due to transformation, but you kind of have to break this in to get that ankle pivot to move. There's a little tab in there, and it's just on this side right here. It's very tricky to see, but yeah, it, and it's hard to get that back into place, but once it's in place, you could hear it click, and then to get that ankle pivot to move, you have to just push in and then now you get beautiful ankle pivot. Now to measure out this Megatron figure, you can see that he is standing right at seven inches tall. Now for a size comparison, here's the Siege Voyager class Megatron next to the Siege Voyager class Optimus Prime. And I think these are both great figures. I do like the Optimus Prime just a little bit more so. And it does look like Megatron is a little bit bulkier than Prime over here, but that doesn't really bother me too much. I honestly did have a lot of fun taking pictures of these two battling it out. If you noticed earlier, I did forget this piece, but I found it in between shooting clips. And then we have the Voyager class Studio Series Megatron which I'm kind of kind of walking away from that studio series line a little bit more and more I don't know and then of course here's our Voyager class siege Megatron next to G1 Megatron and then here's Megatron next to your average six inch scale figure We have the Marvel Legends big time let down spider-man So Optimus Prime's pretty much been a truck of some sort this whole time But you've been a gun you've been a tank you've been a Cybertronian thingy and God knows what else I mean pick something man pick something ah! I gotta thank you guys again for watching my video, especially these Transformers videos. I don't get as much views on these as I do with Marvel figure reviews, so it touches my heart that you guys stick around and watch these. I really do appreciate it a lot, as well as when you hit that like button, leave your comments down below, and please hit that subscribe button, as well as the notification bell if you have not already. This is a very cool figure, and I love having it on the stand right over here. I was able to get him into a lot of fun poses. I really like the modes a lot. Both modes make me very happy. I really think Hasbro has stepped up their game for this Siege line. I was very skeptical at first, but man, I'm very pleased with it so far, and I'm giving this Megatron figure a sud rating of I love it! And again, I would like to know what you guys think, so please don't forget to leave a comment down below. If you want to follow me on social media, please check me out over on Stardust, where I'm doing movie and TV show reviews. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. Links to everything in the description below. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace! And, uh, action figures, action figures, action figures every day I'm posing action figures I'm posing action figures I'm posing action figures it's okay that's crispy hey I'm sure I'm prime videos hey you should click one yeah, click on one of them or subscribe if you haven't Shot, we 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 shot,